Good evening. Welcome to the Greenville County School Board meeting tonight. Uh, we have a lot of business to cover, so we're going to go ahead and get started. With that being said, uh, I will turn it over to Ms. Glenda Marson Fair, 1.01 .01, Prayer and Introduction. Let us pray. Thank you for the unique gifts of every child as they transition into this new school year. Fill each student with fresh enthusiasm and a heart that is excited to learn and grow. Cover them with your enduring love, give them confidence and grace, and equip them with the ability to persevere through challenges and trials. Bless each teacher with wisdom, understanding, and a heart to serve as we, the Greenville County School District family, embark on this journey together. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing. I have the privilege tonight to introduce a young lady, Miss Heaven Bird from Welcome Elementary School. Heaven is a fourth grade student at Welcome Elementary School who is actively involved in clubs and opportunities both inside and outside of school. She is a member of the school's honor course, Alpha Pack Leadership Club, and a member of the patrol team. This summer, she attended a week-long camp in Hendersonville, North Carolina called Camp Bob. She also participates in after-school activities with the Frazee Center and attends Relentless Church. Heaven's principal, Donna Ketram, tells us she is a great student and leader who has achieved designation on the A honor roll. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Heaven Bird for our Pledge of Allegiance. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, Heaven. I can't think of a prettier name. And uh, thank you for the pledge, and thank you for having a good start for your year back to school. Thank you. Thank you all. All right, at this time, I'd like to thank Ms. Bush for these beautiful flowers expressions. I have to tell you, I'm, I'm starting to see Clemson and Carolina combining here I see garnet and I see orange and you know what it's the best of both worlds so thank you so much it's absolutely gorgeous and I thank you for that all right at this time I would entertain a motion um, to approve the consent calendar motion to approve a uh, motion approved by Mr. Suddeth, a second. Second by Ms. Bush. All in favor, please address by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The motion passes. Okay. All right. Let's see. I'm trying to get. Uh, there are no visitors tonight, so we thank you. Uh, at this time, I will call on Mr. Chuck Sailors for the presentation of some awards. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Tonight I'm here on this side of the dais representing the South Carolina School Board Association in recognition of four of our fellow board members for their service in, as part of our Boardsmanship Institute. Established in 1982, South Carolina School Board Association established the Boardsmanship Institute in a way of recognizing and thanking board trustees for their service and for their, their willingness to receive professional development as servants of the public. 
This evening we have four members of the Greenville Board that we would like to acknowledge. So at this time I'd like to ask to come forward Mr. Roy Shamley who has received level two, Mrs. Levin Mrs. Linda Levinis Wells who will receive level five, Mr. Derek Lewis who will receive level four, and Mrs. Glenda Morrison Fair who will receive level five. Would you ladies and gentlemen please come forward. The highest achievement for this recognition is a level six. So as you can see this evening, these ladies and gentlemen have worked very hard to represent our district. And on behalf of the School Board Association, I'd like to thank them for their service and their continued support of our efforts. And we'll go ladies first. Glenda. I have no clue, but I can tell you this much. Hey, I'll sign them. I'm next year. I go in in December. We have one more recognition, and um, this is big. I mean, all of them are big, but this is pretty special. Greenville County Schools Personalized Learning Initiative. Tonight, we celebrate the completion of the final phase of the personalized learning initiative first outlined in the 2013 through 2018 Greenville County School Strategic Plan Education, uh, Strategic Education Plan. As this school year began last week, all students at all schools in grades third through 12th have a personal computer, uh, computer device. This project started over six years ago with the buildup by ETS of the necessary infrastructure, including 7,500 Wi-Fi access points and 1 million feet of cable to support our personalized learning initiative. The district's technology committee selected the devices and designed the framework. Oh boy, academics department personnel conducted the required training and the ETS staff managed the logistics of issuing and maintaining the equipment. Schools undertook a three-year phase in program to train over 5,000 school leaders, teachers, and other staff members on how to most effectively manage and utilize the technology before implementing in their classrooms. We started with three pilot schools and phased in the remaining schools in three cohorts. Today, we have 14 million square feet of Wi-Fi co coverage, 90,000 Google accounts, and 78,370 Chromebooks. It took the sustained efforts of many, many people to make this project a reality. We want to thank the implementation team responsible for completing this successful project, which includes academic instruction technology, education technology services, finance, maintenance, district technology committee, school administrators, and staff. On behalf of the school board, we are very, very honored and excited for all of your compliments, and we stand to recognize you and thank you for your, all you did. Now, and 
order to really highlight this evening, we're going to ask all of you, we're going to take a three-minute break, and we'll be right back. But I want all of you to, Terry, do you want it on the front? We're going to meet on the front steps of the district. All the board trustees, we're going to be in this picture, and we're going to present this award to them. Okay, let's go. Everybody? All these guys? Everybody that was involved. So let's go. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go ahead and um, get started. If everybody would take their seats. We have no visitors, so we will move on to 4.01. Superintendent's report. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. As is customary this time of the year, we like to spend a few minutes talking a little bit about the things that occur over the summer in preparation for the beginning of school. We had an outstanding opening to school this year. Pat, you've already heard me say uh, how fortunate we were this year as far as filling our teacher vacancies. We, uh, we had fewer than we can, uh, we can recall a past year where we've had fewer uh, leading up the last 10 days of school. So that has really gone well, and that's certainly, I think, in large part uh, due to the actions the board took in the spring with our budget, uh, with the way we were able to increase compensation for teachers, uh, do some other things related to planning time for elementary teachers, class sizes for teachers. Uh, I think that made a, quite a difference in our recruiting efforts from the spring into the summer. But a few other areas that, as you all know, that we work on throughout the summer to be prepared for the start of the school year to ensure that day one starts as if it is day 181. Over the summer, our food and nutrition services provided at 22 community sites and 30 school sites and eight food truck sites community meals for young people, serving 30, over 30,000 breakfast, over 65,000 lunches, and 2,600 snacks, a total of 98,420 meals. They employed an additional 90, 61 individuals during the summer to carry out those tasks. Operations and maintenance completed 7,352 building work orders, that's just over the summer months, and 1,729 grounds work orders, they cut 14,900 acres of grass. They replaced 153,000 uh, square feet of flooring and cleaned every one of our facilities from top to bottom. Warehouse completed 190 work orders. They delivered 6,287 6, lines to 122 different locations, delivered furniture to over 60 locations, including uh, new furniture for CDCs. They coordinated with ETS to pick up over 8,000 technology devices. Transportation was able to license 13 drivers over the summer and train three, seven new aides. They made 27,244 telephone calls through the call center prior to the start of school to confirm with parents the riding arrangements for their children on the bus. They condensed or reconfigured 19 routes and installed tablets for driver time and attendance, rolling them out to the buses over the summer. We also received and put into place 29 new buses uh, to date uh, for use in the covering the routes that we covered during the regular school year from State Department of Education. Facilities and energy management, uh, 12 locations this summer were painted. That's over a million square feet of painting. 20 locations we completed lead dimming installation, lead lighting dimming installation. 49 locations completed the secured entry transaction windows. At nine locations, we did additional security, secured entry renovations. We did two HVAC replacements, total location replacements. 
did a boiler replacement, three chiller replacement, and three HVAC improvement projects. Uh, replaced uh, irrigation systems at three schools, did track reconditioning at five schools, and resurfaced tennis courts at three schools. Planning and dental graphics contacted 8,200 families to confirm school registration, uh, handled more than 8,000 phone calls and emails, processed 1,672 change in assignment requests, and identified and corrected 1,700 student data area, errors that uh, were entered into the system. Human Resources employed, uh, conducted the employment process for 1,020 new employees, 560 of which were teachers. We have 337 first-year teachers and 13 new principals in the district. Great opening to school and a lot to do with having that smooth and great opening was the work that you saw chronicled in the slides preceding us. Now you'll notice we didn't talk about training. There was so much training that went on during the summer in such depth, we want to do a little more of a presentation on that, so we'll be sharing that with you at the Committee of the Whole in the September CAL meeting. But that's kind of a summary of what we did over our summer in Greenville County Schools. Uh, we appreciate your support and particularly those things in our budget that made it much easier to carry out the, that work and to recruit teachers into our classrooms uh, for the new school year. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Royster. I'm glad it, we had a great start this year, and it will be a great ending. So thank you so much, and thank you for all of you in the, in the audience because all of y'all bring something to the table. So we're very appreciative of you. All right, 5.01, the revision of board policy EB, building and grounds maintenance, and tobacco-free policy. Um, Committee of the Whole's recommendation to approve the revision of board policy EB. It does not require a second, but all in favor, please address by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please address by saying aye, nay. Oh, yes. Before you say nay, <laughs> is there any discussion? Sir? Okay, my apologies, but having not announced the decision after the no vote for nay, any discussion? Having no discussion, all in favor, please address by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. The motion carries. Our next item. 5.02, revision of board policy GBRL, restrictions on the use of alcohol, uh, tobacco products. Committee of the Whole's recommendation to approve the revision of board policy GBRL. Any questions? All in favor, please address by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. Five point oh three revision of policy G J C D A behavior code. Committee of the Whole's recommendation to approve the revision of board policy J C D A. Coming from the committee, it does not need a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please address by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. The the motion carries. Revision Board Policy EBB JCDAB to pack tobacco use. Committee of the Whole's recommendation to appro uh, approve the revision of the Board Policy JCDAB. Coming from the committee, it does not need a second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, please address by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Policy passes. The motion passes. 
Revision 5.05, .05, the revision of board policy EBB, school safety and security. The committee of the whole's recommendation to approve the revision of board policy EBB. Ms. Madam, Madam Ms. Wells, I think, uh, is there any discussion? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to make a substitute motion to approve policy EBB revisions as reflected in the document on board docs noted as 08-2719, board policy EBB safety-wells substitute. Second. There is a second. Any discussion? Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, we will vote on the substitute motion as reflected in the document 082719, Board Policy, EBB Safety, Wells Sub. All in favor, please address by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion carries. We will go back to now the motion as presented. Uh, substitute. Substitute motion becomes the motion. All, uh, all in fact, uh, is there any discussion? any discussion? Madam Chairman. Yes, sir. Just want to make sure the administration has looked at this motion and totally agrees with it. Is your mic on? I'm not close. I, okay. I just want the administration to, to say whether they have looked at this motion and agree with it. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Meek. Uh, yes, we've, we've reviewed the motion, we've reviewed it with Mr. Webb, and we fully support the uh, submitted substitute motion. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please address by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Hearing none, the motion passes, and we'll move on. Just. Yes, Ms. Just, Wells. Just for the record, the, the motion that we approved was, was the motion, the revision as substituted, right? Yes. Okay. It was a substitute motion and then became the motion. Okay. okay. All right. Next. 5.06, deletion of board policy EBCA, vandalism protection. Committee of the Whole's recommendation to approve the deletion of board policy EBCA. All uh, does not need um, a, a second. So all in favor, oh, any discussion? I don't think there's any discussion. All in favor, please address by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. The motion passes and we'll move to the next item. 5.07. Dele uh, deletion of board policy EBC security. The committee of the whole's recommendation to approve the revision, uh, approve the deletion board policy of EBCA vandalism protection. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion. All in favor, please address by saying aye. Aye. We already did five points. I, I, think, oh, I, missed, I, think, I think we're on EBC. Sorry. Oh, five I'm sorry. Seven. Deletion of board policy EBC. EBC, Committee of the Whole's recommendation to, to approve the deletion of the board policy EBC security. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, please address by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. The motion passes and we will move on. Madam Chairman. Yes, sir. Point of order. Um, yes, sir. At the committee of the whole, didn't we pass a motion without a recommendation to the, for, for Mr. Webb to look at and revise? That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, you're, yes sir. You, you did. And that was on board policy GBRL regarding the uh, verbiage, um, regarding discipline with regard to employees. And in the version that was presented to you this evening, the, uh, the words including up to termination has been, they 
have been removed from what, that policy. What number was that, Mr. Webb? That was 5.02. Madam Chairman, I think the, the motion, I think we, uh, I don't know if it makes a difference or not, but we passed it without a recommendation, so I think you needed a motion to approve it also. I don't know if Mr. because there wasn't a motion to approve it coming from the committee, was there? It's just motion to send to the board without a recommendation. <laughs> My, my, my interpretation, Mr. Meek, is, is that it was approved by the committee to this board this evening and that the version that was was passed, approved a few minutes ago, included that the removal of that language. It says the revision. Of board policy, oh. GBRL. Oh. And Since we already voted on it, I'm not going to disagree, but... Uh, well, I, I looked into that, and I didn't see a problem with it. Okay? I'll take your word for it. Well, thank you. <laughs> okay. 5.08. Recommendation. Uh, recommended motion for the administration. Mr. Dr. Royster, would you like to say anything before I do this? Only, only if there's... Uh any questions? Only if there's any question because we okay. reviewed that as a contractual matter in executive session. Okay. Coming from the administration, we will need a motion. Madam Chairman. Yes, sir. I move to approve the purchase of 0 0.42 acres to support the addition to Summit Elementary, Summit Drive Elementary School. Second. And there's a second. A second by Ms. Grayson. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all in favor, please address by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion carries and we will proceed. Okay. 5.09. Recommended motion from the administration. Do I? Madam Chairman. Yes, sir, Mr. Sailors. I move to approve the reappointment of Mr. Andrew Jones to serve as an additional three-year term on the Building Equity Sooner for Tomorrow Board of Directors. Second. And there's a second by Mr. Meek. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please address by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing uh, the motion passes, and we will move on to 6.01 internal auditing service project status report. Mr. Barber. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chairman. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are presenting our project status report, disclosing information on the projects that we're currently working on. We've also included an additional worksheet to provide a time summary and status of current projects. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions for Mr. Barber? Any questions? Okay. This was from information only, hearing no questions. Thank you, Mr. Barber. Thank you. 7.01, committee and liaison reports. Um, Mr. Lewis, liaison reports. Thanks, Madam Chairman. The advocacy committee met today, um, and a, a couple of things that I think will be important for the board to uh, be on the lookout for. One is we have scheduled our uh, committee with the legislative delegation and that'll be tentatively scheduled for October the 22nd at J.L. Mann High School. It uh, currently is scheduled to be a luncheon. The purpose of this meeting will be one for the delegation members to be invited to hear the superintendent talk about kind of the state of the district and what is going on. But the, uh, the other section we intend to use to really speak to them about the resolutions that this, uh, commit, this board has already passed um, with policy recommendations that are uh, that apply to Senate Bill 419, which is the education reform bill. So between now and the September board meeting, uh, we'll be sending out from our committee to the entire board um, a series of those resolutions that were already passed by this board with some specific examples of how those resolutions crosswalk with some recommendations we have about Senate Bill 419 so that you can look at them and then the intent would be that the board would actually approve those resolutions and talking points 
at the September board meeting. And then we would use those as our talking points from the board to the legislative delegation. So that'll be coming out in email probably by the end of this week. So the board will have several weeks to look at it before we ask you to, to vote on it at the September board meeting. The, the other thing that I would draw the board's attention to is uh, now we are in the pre-filing section of uh, next year's legislative session. And there's a, there, there are a couple of bills that I think we're going to need as a board to pay particular attention to. And so the committee will be watching them, but we encourage you to do so as well. One is there will likely be a bill filed around education savings accounts, um, which is essentially our, the voucher program for the state of South Carolina. Obviously, we have expressed concerns about something like that in the past, but it, it might be something that we uh, need to help our delegation understand the fiscal impact it would have on our district. So we'll be watching watching that one. There's also a possibility of re removing the retirement cap, which would allow those who have retired to return back to work. Um, but, but one of the uh, provisions that we think is going to sit in the Senate is a requirement that an employee wait 12 months before they return to work, uh, which could really uh, have a negative impact on what could be a benefit of allowing these employees to retire and stay with us. So we'll be looking at that one. And the third one is a bill that has not yet been filed, but I think could be of, of significance to this board. And that is that there is a possibility of, of a bill that would prohibit uh, government structures from being named after living persons. Um, and, and part of that is in response to some issues that are happening with current living persons who've been charged after a building was named after them. But as, the, as those who have expressed interest in writing the bill have said in interviews, they want to expand it to all government funded structures, which could include schools and particularly maybe auditoriums or facilities on school property. So we'll be paying attention to that bill. And obviously, if, if there's something there that could have an impact on, on this district, um, we'll, we'll come back and, and let you know about it. But those are three that I think we'll be particularly paying attention to for the rest of the fall. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Lewis. I'm going to ask Ms. Wells if she would just give a short briefing on the South Carolina School Board Law Conference. Yeah. Thank, you. Sure. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I am appreciative of the, those of us who are able to make it down to North Charleston for the conference, um, you know, to give the audience a flavor of the kinds of things that we talked about, spent our weekend discussing and, and mulling over. Um, we had presentations on FOIA and how we need to interact with FOIA, the national school law landscape, the use of social media by board members as it relates to our First Amendment rights, uh, workplace bullying workshop a consolidation of school districts workshop because there's a lot of conversation around that so what to expect there IDEA litigation uh, between the state of South Carolina and the US Department of Ed student data privacy under FERPA you guys uh, you can I can tell you're just hanging on the edge of your seat this sounds so interesting to you doesn't it <laughs> um, and then we had a great panel with some legislators um, as we do every year let some legislative leaders that were there that answer some questions to help us kind of dig into what to expect, what's coming with regard to funding, with legislation, those kinds of things. And then followed up with um, a great presentation around the Ethics Reform Act and our responsibilities there. So um, a, lot of, a lot of learning goes on. Um, we're always appreciative that Mr. Webb uh, makes the trip down as well and presents and shares his knowledge um, with others there. Uh, it's, a, it's a great workshop, a lot of... Um, there's a lot that goes into school law in that landscape, and I think it's really important that we stay on top of that, so I'm appreciative of the time that we've spent doing that. Thank you. Mr. Meat, would you like to give an update on policy? Sure. Thank you. Uh, our ad hoc committee for personnel policies met this afternoon. We did not take any action. We we're reviewing the policy and some, uh, uh, maybe some recommendations at the next meeting, and we'll bring those forward as soon as we have something. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else that has anything for the good of the order? Okay. We'll go to uh, 8.01 finance report. Dr. Royster. We don't have a finance report. We don't normally have one this month. Uh, the auditors, the external auditors are working to close out last year's uh, books and provide you with an audit report uh, generally in the November meeting. 
Uh, Ms. Stack is here. If you have any question that you would like to ask of her, she'd be glad to respond to it. Any questions, Mr. Lewis? Not a, not a question that we need to respond to, but just I, I know that we had a, an article run about student debt in the food nutrition programs, and I didn't fully understand some of the answers about how that debt is calculated and how it carries over. So I, I just personally would request that perhaps at a future meeting we have just a presentation on either the board or CAL on how, how those numbers were calculated and what impact that debt has on our, our finances. <coughs> we we can certainly do that. Uh, we may uh, we can schedule that as a, on a CAL. You may want to know just very briefly, because you may get some questions about it, just kind of a few main points. One is we cannot pursue debt incurred by a student who subsequently qualifies for free or reduced lunch. That would be the first thing. So if they incur a debt, we, we cannot pursue it. If you incur a debt, the debt technically now never goes away unless we were to use our funds to offset it. And there's no reason to do that because we operate in the black. So the number that you saw in the Greenville News, I believe it was 400 and some odd thousand dollars, Roman. That would be the accumulated debt over 13 years or more. So th those are kind of some general parameters. And if you think about 400 and some odd thousand dollars accumulated by 76,000 students over 13 or more years, it puts a little more perspective on it. So th those are some of the important things. We, we have, a number of years ago, we did use a debt collection service. Uh, I think we found over time that that wasn't a good return on investment. We, we weren't getting back what we were putting into paying them to pursue the debt. Uh, it, the optics of it don't l look really good, but then when you understand all the rules around it, 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 it sort of changes the optics. Most people, though, won't take time to to understand the rules around it. But we'll be glad to put something on the cow about it. But I think those are the most important points that you might want to share with people if they bring things up to you. Thank you. Mr. Meek. Ms. Stack, you know I was going to ask, what is our unassigned fund balance? The latest you have? Well, I have it as of May. That's the last month that we have officially closed. And it's a uh, one hundred fifty five million seven hundred ninety thousand three hundred fifteen dollars one what one hundred fifty one hundred fifty five million seven hundred ninety thousand three hundred fifteen dollars okay uh, and it includes the board assigned amount the eight percent is that what, what are assigned eight point three three percent what what is that reference to in dollars uh fifty one point six million okay thank you you're welcome. Any other questions? Hearing none, do I have a motion to adjourn? Madam Chairman, I move to adjourn. Second. Second by Mr. Meek. All in favor, please address by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? The meeting is over at 742. Thank you.